This is The Drive with Dale Lally and Matt Williamson on your 24-7 home of the black and gold. SNR. Steelers Nation Radio. And here we are. Welcome to The Drive. I am Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson, and it is a Trying to do a lovely Wednesday here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, the dude. sun is now out. The rain has stopped. It, it has uh, kind of uh, really started last Friday and kind of just continued no, on. It's nice out now. Right. It kind of uh, matched up with the mood of the uh, city with the Steelers' loss on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, yeah. We didn't have any rain before that in September. Steelers lose that weekend. It rained the entire weekend. Yeah. Go figure. And now it's clearing up because it's now it's to get clearing up and again. it's supposed to be a nice all through the weekend. So yeah, there you have it. Coincidence? <laughs> I don't know. We'll Brandon, see on Brandon Sunday Cooks if that has anything playing, to do with Mike it. Yeah. Parsons isn't playing. Uh, we have a Steelers injury report here from practice today, or I should say practice report. Uh, Russell Wilson, again, limited today, although I, I can say that he did do more than what he had done. Okay. Um, again, it's a pretty vague term. Very vague term. Uh, Jalen Warren did not practice. Nick Herbig did not practice. Alex Highsmith did not practice. He's already been declared out. Mm-hmm. Isaac Sayamalu, a full participant okay. in practice today. Joined you here. Michael Pruitt did not practice. Cordero Patterson did not practice. And Keanu Benton was a limited participant in practice today with that ankle injury. Okay. Tomorrow is going to be a much more telling day. Mike Tomlin yeah, said yeah. at his news conference on Tuesday that uh, you know the expectation was for some of these guys to be slowed early in the week, and then we'll see where it goes from there. Okay. And ben- the, Benton and Herbig are the two that kind of stand yeah, out. For most of these person. guys are more veteran guys that if they don't practice, it's not going to be mm-hmm. the end of the We're world. pretty deep in the season where there's a lot of bumps and bruises and stuff like that. Too, yeah. You know. um, Jeremiah Moon, who was uh, designated to return today, mm-hmm. um, he uh, he was a full participant in practice today. Okay. They could use him. Yeah, i say he might be in the mix. I mean, or at least 10, 15 snaps, something like that. So, something especially if Herbig else. doesn't play, then he's going to play a lot more. Yeah, I, I don't think that's going to be. I'd Herbig, be shocked, Herbig yeah. came back and played in that game. Right, right, right. Um, you know, Benton played through that injury. I, I don't think those are, are going to be, uh, you know. Those are the two that I think are most likely that you mentioned that are yeah. probably going to be out there. Um, we'll see about Jalen Warren and uh, – and, and Cordell Patterson, um, I didn't see Patterson today um, anywhere at the facility, really. really. He does a good job of hiding, though. He's a <laughs> savvy veteran. Well, okay, he's better on the wall. I had to wait him out. I'm working on a, a feature story for Steelers.com on him. And I, I finally had to go to PR and say, hey, uh, can you guys help me get him? Because he's never in the locker room. <laughs> okay. And they're like, yeah, he kind of does that on purpose. <laughs> he knows the tricks, so. huh? He didn't want, well last week. He didn't want to answer a lot of questions about Jalen Warren and whether he was going to be the number two back okay. and all that kind of stuff. And you don't want to speak for him. He's know? a good speaker. Like yeah. when you talk to him, he's very thoughtful and gives you good answers. He just doesn't. I don't know necessarily like to do it. Love to do it, or and he knows how to avoid it. Apparently, yeah. Too. Better on the block. Yeah. Well, if you're a veteran guy, you kind of yeah. You know the trick. Figure those things. Like before, I got him yes last uh, Friday. I just pull back the curtain a little bit here. What the players can do at the facility. Mm-hmm. Um, I followed him right into the locker room. They were practicing indoors on Friday, and I, I'm, I'm all right. I see him leaving. I'm following him straight in. I'm going to get him. He puts his stuff in the in the uh, in, in his know locker. He's elusive on and off the field. I, I, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and I've got one of the Steelers PR people with me, Makaya Cherry, and she goes and grabs. Hey, you're going to talk now? And he's like, Yeah, I'm going to go get a haircut before everybody else gets in here. I want to get my haircut. <laughs> They have a barber in the I facility am. because you need that kind of stuff. And people don't think about this. These guys show up large. A lot of times it's still dark out. Oh, yeah. When they leave the facility at night, it's dark. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they put in long, long days, you know, four, so, five, six days a week. I have to tell my Browns haircut story. I Go right ahead. Then, too. So we even log more hours than the players. Yes. You know, I mean, we, were, we would get in there and. Stay late, late, late. And plus, I didn't have a family to go home to. That was, My wife was back here in Pittsburgh, and my buddy James didn't either. So I grew up a Steeler fan. He grew up a uh, Falcons fan. Would watch Vic tape. I'd watch Roethlisberger rookie tape. Like, eh, he might be all right. And we'd eat ice cream and, you know, use the sauna and stuff like that. You know, like, they don't want you to – there's no reason really to leave those facilities if you don't have to. <laughs> like, for example, like, you'd hang your dry cleaning. It doesn't even have to be brown stuff. And next day in your locker is clean dry cleaning. You know, things like that. So – we, too, had a barber. Well, 
our director of pro scouting comes up, and I'm like, did you just get a haircut? I mean, I'm new right here. I'm like, I couldn't believe that service was available. Yes. It's like, yeah. I'm like, you didn't leave? I'm like, yeah, he's down in the, in the locker room. There's the barbers there now. I go down. I'm standing in line with a bunch of players and stuff, and it's about my time to go up, and a lot of people are chuckling, you know, and I'm like, let's see what's real funny here. I sit down, <laughs> and the African-American barber says – Unless you want me to shave all that off, son, I don't really know what to do with it. The, uh, <laughs> the Caucasian barber comes tomorrow. I'm like, I didn't think of that. Okay, sorry, I'll be back. <laughs> Players got a kick out of it. I think you should have gone for it. Just take it all off. Yeah. Yeah, could have. Yeah. Wouldn't have good, right? You wouldn't have <laughs> needed a haircut again maybe the rest of the season. Right, and you're done with it. Yeah. Right. And it might have lasted you your, your entire tenure with the Browns. <laughs> That's probably true. And we don't do these YouTube things then either. No, Not right. What, one bit what I look like. For those of you that don't know or new listeners to the show, Matt was employed, what was it, 364 Three, days? Yeah. I mean, the <laughs> day after they drafted Winslow until the day after we drafted Braylon. Yeah. So one one contract. <laughs> one calendar yeah. year. So I three coaches and two GMs and <laughs> – a whole bunch of employees come and go. Yeah, because the Browns is the Browns. Yeah, we were pretty bad. Everybody keeps their head down. Nobody wants to, anybody to know you're actually in the office because then they start looking at, what's that guy do? I mean, I did a lot of road trips and scouting trips and stuff like that. And every time I'd come back to my desk, there was like a new uh, employee list, you know, because somebody got fired or left or whatever. Every time. <laughs> Yeah, I think the sealer one, you could probably put it there for the year and it's going to be fine, you know. It might be the same one from five years ago. I mean, everything was, the the building was under construction. They were introducing that brownie thing, that mascot. I mean, like, there was, ugh. They actually have two mascots. Right. Like, they can't just. They've They've got a bulldog. Yeah, I believe it's a bulldog. I don't. I, yeah, and then they have the 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 Keebler elf, the sprout thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I the mean, Keebler, like growing up, it's in, literally the Keebler elf. Yeah, growing up in Steelerland, I'm like, can anything just ever be the same? You know? <laughs> Three coaches. Three coaches in a year. <laughs> so there, there was that. It's not real conducive to winning. No, but no. the haircut story didn't work out as planned. Uh, we got some news today out of uh, Dallas, and this isn't good news either for the Cowboys. No. No Brandon Cooks this week. No Brandon Cooks. Parsons has been rolled out. Lawrence we knew. Cooks isn't a great player, but, man. You have to respect the speed on the outside, the other side of Lamb. Right. I mean, they kind of are now in the situation where Lamb and Ferguson kind of look like Fryermuth and Pickens to me. Like Everybody else is, yeah, they'll chip in, but it's going to be a two-man show where the ball goes. To to your point on that, um, and this little preview here, this will be part Mm -hmm. of Five for Friday, probably be the lead to Five five for Friday. Um, If you look at... Fryermuth and Ferguson in terms of their production this thus far this year. Everybody, everybody knows, especially, especially the people who play fantasy football. Mm-hmm. Right now, Dallas Goddard leads all tight ends okay. in receptions, and it's largely based off of the last two games. But he has twenty four catches on twenty eight targets. Okay, I mean it's been a tight end wasteland. Yeah, I mean, tight then end you're looking at really low. Brock Bowers, the rookie in, in with the Raiders, has twenty catches on twenty four targets. Mm-hmm. Um. Then it's Cole Komet with 18 catches on 20 targets. And then it's Fryermuth with 17 catches on 20 targets. And right after him is Ferguson. He has 16 catches, but in only three games. I was saying he missed a game, too. He missed a game. The thing you notice about that, low target numbers for these guys, Mm -hmm. but high percentages of of completions. When you do throw to the tight end in today's NFL, it's almost like stealing. Bunch of cover two. Yeah, because of the cover two stuff. I I asked Fryermuth about it today. Um, I said, are teams kind of – you you see all this cover two, you would think that tight end usage and and production would be up. I was going to say, you We're not seeing that across the board, though. You'd think there'd be tight ends galore in fantasy to grab, you know, and there isn't. There isn't. By any stretch. But some of the – There's been an injury here and there. Yeah, some of the guys, some of the, the old standbys have not produced. Andrews, Kelsey, yeah. Gittles, missed some time. Yeah. yeah, right, right, right. But injuries are a big part of that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've got Pitts guys is doing nothing. Yeah, Tyler guys Graffin, missing games. Ingram. You would think guys like Pitts, but Pitts is different. Pitts is very different. If you look at the guys who are here on the top of the list, and you, you look for a comparison with those guys, a lot of like, all right, Goddard isn't a true blocking, blocking tight end. No, but he's a two-way do-it-all. He's a two-way yeah, do-it-all yeah, yeah, guy, yeah. and they don't have anybody else. Right, right, right. You know, Fryer moves a, a good two-way tight end. Mm-hmm. Um, you, Ferguson, know, you know, right. Ferguson's a, 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 you know, more of a two-way tight end. These are the guys that are getting 
the catches because they're running that stuff to the middle of the field. The, mm-hmm. the tight ends like Pitts, who are outside the numbers and things of that nature, running more downfield stuff, they're not getting any catches. I know, I know we're not here to talk about Kyle Pitts anymore, but he <laughs> might be a bust. I mean, like, he might just be – that's a strong word, but it might be he's just a big receiver. And if he can't beat corners, then we don't care if you're a receiver. You know, but – Friermuth is the only tight end in the league that has four or more catches every, every week. Yeah. You know, that's the consistency. He does have much more. He's 17 for the year over four. But Ferguson, over the last two weeks, I think he has 19 targets. Yeah. I mean, because even that. They that don't have a number. Back, they don't have a true number two either. No, right. It's similar, especially with Cook's out. He's only resembling it. Yeah. I mean, if, if you look at the Steelers' production thus far, George Pickens has 20 catches for 284 yards. Mm-hmm. All the other wide receivers on the roster combined have 14 for 192. They do have a touchdown, the, the uh, Austin touchdown. So there, it is Fryermuth with 17 catches. It's only for 156 yards, but he's moving the chains. But it's in front of those safeties. And, yeah. You know, right. And I think that is a, a nice cheap way to, as you mentioned, I mean, kind of like stealing. It's a cheap way to get some yardage, and they've schemed him up well. Um, Pickens has 50% of the Steelers' air yards. I mean, they throw him deep. He gets the most targets. You know, you mentioned compared to the other receivers. So he's going to get a lot of digs. Lamb's going to get a lot of Porter. Yeah. You know, maybe it comes down to which one of those two has which a better day. Which one of the tight you know, ends right, right. is, is, and, is the yeah, bigger factor. Exactly. And, exactly. You know, the Steelers will be the more successful team running the football. I absolutely think so. I yeah. mean, Dallas is bad at it. And their run defense is bad. And their run defense is bad. Right, it's a right, bad right. combination, really. They allow 1.1 more yards on the ground than they produce. That's per, a, per play. Per play. Yeah. That's a really big number. That's a huge number. <laughs> a huge number, yeah. Huge number. Yeah, they don't control the line of scrimmage at all. Really. And their backs aren't particularly good. Yeah. But he, you would think with their guards, because their guards yeah. are good. Guards are real good. That they would control the line of scrimmage offensively better than what they do. It surprises me. Uh, and even the rookie center hasn't been BB, hasn't been Frazier, but he hasn't been bad. No. The tackles are so-so. I mean, Guyton's a good prospect, but he's not super strong. And they, they paid Steele a year or two ago. I bet they're kind of regretting it. He's a below-average right tackle. Yeah. But you would think they'd be able to run the ball a little better. But yeah. The ball carriers aren't very good. No, they aren't. I mean, you know? but in, in previous year, like Dowdell showed more juice last year mm-hmm. than he did. I mean, there were times last year where you're like, he might be better than Tony Pollard. Yeah. At times. Yeah, I thought he was interesting. You know, Zeke being pretty shot doesn't surprise me. No, at all. I mean, he's slow. The thing about Zeke, though, is what's interesting for this game is he's still really good in protection. Yeah. So, how are we going to help steal? I wonder if that means more snaps for Zeke to Dax Wright, you know, just because of protection. You need to get Ferguson out in the route. You don't want him. Right. You don't want him chipping. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. And if I'm the Steelers, I want to get Cam Hayward over Guyton. Yeah. If I can do that mm-hmm. um, and just have him attack a rookie, as you mentioned, he's not the stoutest guy. I mean, I, I saw him at the at the uh, Senior Bowl, um, and I actually commented to him, "I'm like, dude, you look like a power forward." Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he's long and he's pretty, but he's not doesn't have a lot of sand in his pants. Yeah, there's not there's not much there in terms of that, and there's no better bull rusher with that arm lockout than Cam Hayward in the league. Yeah, even now, I mean, when he when he locks that arm, it's locked, and you're going for a ride. And he will line up in a four eye, which is a a four inside, which is yeah. to the tackle's inside shoulder, a lot. But that's more of the three four stuff, though. Too. I mean, you you need Benton on the field probably to to have him that wide, yeah. especially if you're gonna have the other they, D end. They have done some stuff though at times where they've kind of stood Cam up on the outside mm-hmm. on the tackle as well. If they want that matchup, yeah, 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 in some key situations. So I could see them maybe doing that and it makes some sense. You know, even some stunts just to mm-hmm. to get him. Driving, you know, driving the, the rookie out. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe you clear something up for one of the inside backers or, or, you know, the outside backers looping around. Maybe use a little more Liao as a bull rusher. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, because Herbig's more going to beat you around the edge, yeah. speed, you know. Um, Highsmith would have probably used a lot of power, a lot of bull rush on yeah. him. You know what I mean? And, and it's just different styles. Styles makes fight type of thing, you know? Yeah. I will say this that, you know, digging in on Dak Prescott, um, and this isn't necessarily against the blitz, but his numbers against pressure are excellent. Are really good this year. Uh, he hasn't been pressured a ton. It's like the sixth uh, least amount of pr- sixth lowest amount of pressure in mm-hmm. the league. But when he has been pressured, he's twenty-one of thirty-three, has averaged eight point nine yards per attempt, has 
five passing touchdowns and no interceptions. Mm. His passer rating is 131.8, which is outstanding. That's when he's under pressure. Under pressure, yeah. Yeah, that's when people are bearing down on Blitzer. When not not. pressured, 75 of 116 at 6.7 yards per attempt, one touchdown, two interceptions, and the passer rating 79.6. I mean, it's really, really rare for a quarterback to end up having better numbers at the end of the year when pressured than yeah. not. But the fact if you're even close yeah. is really a calm. Doesn't mean you don't want to pressure him. I just no, don't it's know. It's not that, like, well, let's just hang him back. I just off don't know here. that you want to blitz him. That's where I was going to go with it. He has not been blitzed much really over the last couple of years. And I don't know why it is, but he never gets the credit of being incredibly smart at the line of scrimmage. He's a microprocessor at the line of scrimmage. He sees the blitz coming, he knows how to beat it. And the league knows it now. Like, we're not going to fool him. You know, yeah. he, he's really sharp. And typically, they've had guys that he could get the ball too quickly who mm-hmm. were good pass catchers that could hurt you. I, I don't know that they have that now. Um, but even Lamb's been a little interesting this year. Like, I'm not real. There's this new metric about separation and all that. And I don't usually even cite it, you know, because I'm not sure I believe it yet. But he was open a lot more last year than yeah. it was this year. You know, like, it's been a lot of tight window stuff. It's been a lot of forcing it to them. And part of it, which... Again, they don't have anybody else to throw to. And so you're... Like, I, I might give Porter more help than I usually do in this game yeah. for that reason, you know? I mean, he he's through four games, and he has 20 catches, the same amount as George Pickens. Okay, yeah. And, and you, they're not considered in that same... Like, right. if, if you're talking about, well, who, who's the better receiver? P- people would automatically say, C.D. Lamb's the more sure, dangerous sure. guy. And he was like the first receiver taken in fantasy. I mean, like, yeah. he was unbelievably... And oh, by the way, year. they don't run the ball at all, as we mentioned earlier. No, no. So they are, you should be more reliant on C.D. Lamb, and they, they haven't been hmm. overly reliant on him. They're another team. They're not as bad as the Colts, but they don't run many plays. Their time of possession's bad. You know, I mean, it's another thing. Instance, just not being out on the field enough either. Yeah. You know? Let's get to a break. He is the Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lally. You're listening to The Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. When Matt and I return, we'll be joined by Bob Labriola, the Dean of Doom. Yeah. Right after this. And we are back. I am Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson. And we now welcome onto the show here the Dean of Doom, the Lord of Living in His Fears, Bob Labriola, editor of Steelers Digest and Steelers.com. Bob, we just heard that Zip Recruiter commercial where they said all the F-words. How many F-words were uttered in the Labriola household on uh, on Sunday? Uh, not as many as uh, um, throughout Steelers Nation, I would say. <laughs> just judging from the re- reaction that we've gotten to that game. <laughs> yeah. Really. Yeah. Um, the sky is falling. You know, I mean, right? Isn't it? I mean, obviously they were the Steelers were were going to go seventeen and zero. Um, you know, I understand people being upset, disappointed with with the loss and, and those kind of things. Uh, but there were some things there that I, you know, Matt and I talked about it on Monday, Bob. That quite frankly, in in, in the previous few seasons, if the Steelers fell behind seventeen nothing in the first quarter, that game was over and lost the turnover battle. Yeah. And, oh yeah. Yeah, you know, and um, I, I really, I had legitimate, I guess, hope when it was twenty-seven, twenty-four. You know, until that uh, botched snap on the in the shotgun. I thought they were good. I, 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 I did too. I was going to say that, you know, and I know that goes against character for me, but um, <laughs> yeah, I, I thought they were going to win, and because I thought that Mike Tomlin would go for it. I don't think I didn't think he was going to play for a tie. Um, so, you know, but I mean, it, you know, it didn't happen. And I, I think I remember, I think it was you, Matt, who in the pregame show, um, you know, was, we were uh, at um, iHeart Studios getting ready to do our part of the uh, pregame show, which mm-hmm. starts at eleven for a one o'clock game. Um, I think I heard you saying it's really tough to win four in a row in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is three road games in a row, uh, and, even if they're not, you know? Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, and the, the thing that's what that wears me out, I guess is the, the right way to put it is, you know, everything, everybody wants to draw conclusions immediately. 
You know, um, the running game wasn't very effective. And so now, you know, you, you can't, you got to find somebody else. You can't play nausea anymore. You can't run those plays anymore. You know, you, you, whatever it is, um, the, the Colts complete some passes uh, in the middle of the field. The scheme is terrible. <laughs> those guys can't play. The inside linebackers stink. I mean, you know, it's, I don't know. It, <laughs> as I said, everybody seems to be draw, want, want to draw conclusions uh, immediately after, after, you know, one game or one aspect of one game. And, you know, it just seemed to me too, that a lot of the things that every, that, that the Steelers were getting praised for in the first three wins. Now, all of a sudden after that last game, um, you know, their secondary stinks. Mm-hmm. The secondary looked pretty good for three straight weeks. Um, but now it stinks. <laughs> uh, and, and again, everything is one way or the other. It's absolute, you know, daisies and unicorns or, uh, you know, rip and uh, cut and, you know, whatever it might be. So, uh, again, I, I remember Tunchilkin always talking about how, you know, every four weeks uh, of an NFL season, everything kind of resets itself. Yeah. You know, you, there, are no, there are no Super Bowls won in September, and, and most times – in my you know recollection and my experience the teams that are really good in september or re- have a really good record in september or you know whatever they're doing really well they're they're not the teams that uh are in that last game in february so um i don't know i keep thinking of um was it kevin bacon in um animal house that was well. All yeah. All is well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't go so far as to say all is well, because it's obvious that there are things that need to be improved upon, worked on, changed, uh, adjusted, all of that stuff. Absolutely. But I mean, the, the gloom and doom and, you know, fire and cut and, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah. It's just such an overreaction. An area that's starting to concern me, and we are getting some good news on Isaac C. Amalu being back, but just a rash of injuries on the offensive line and too much change for my liking. You know, I, I, I would love to have, I mean, we got a little spoiled here the last couple of years or in the pouncy era of set it and forget it. These are my starting five and it's just been constant shuffling. Absolutely. Yes. And that, that really was uh, that, that one stretch, what was it? Two years in a row where not only did the, the starting five uh, start all the games, but they were playing like, a hundred percent of the snaps yeah, or yeah. high 90 percent of the snaps too. And yes, I, I would agree with that. And the, the other thing that I also believe is that, you know, a roster can only uh, absorb so, absorb so, so many injuries. I mean, it's it, then you just, I don't know, you reach critical mass or mm-hmm. whatever the, the term might be where you just, you just, uh, you know, there's nothing you can do about it anymore. Uh, there, you know, you can, you know, the whole next man up concept, you know, is nice um, as a, as a coaching phrase and, you know, and those kind of things, but I mean, we all know better. (laughs) Right. 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 Exactly. I mean, you, 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 there's only, I don't know, there's only so many um, hits to a roster or a starting group that a unit or a team can take. And, um, you know, especially, and here's the other thing too, when those injuries happen in game, that's especially um, debilitating or mm-hmm. harmful because, you know, you've come up with a plan, either offensively or defensively, whichever it might be, and you've practiced it all week. Okay. Then you lose somebody. Now, you know, fans think, well, just adjust the scheme and, you know, change it. Well, it's not that easy. No. Um uh, because even if you 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 might be able to identify exactly what the problem is, but then you can tell players about it. But it's not a video game. We just <laughs> reprogram the thing, and all of the pieces know where to go. Uh, you know. Um, and labs, that so, holds true for playing against Flacco all of a sudden too. Like I got all these questions right. this week. Like, well, how could they not know who Flacco is? They know who Flacco is, but they practiced for Richardson. <laughs> you know. Right. 
and it's that's tremendously different tremendously different mm -hmm. and, and i don't know, you know bob that if everybody understands that you only really have three practices yeah before you play a game three two-hour practices that's what you're limited to by the cba so you're concentrating right. on stopping Who you're gonna see quarterback yeah. runs and yeah right yeah. right so yes. uh, yeah and, yeah and, and again a 39 if he's 39 39 49 year old joe flacco and anthony richardson they couldn't be on farther ends of the quarterback spectrum than those two guys. 100%. And so whatever you were planning, however you were planning to rush Richardson, uh, spy him, whatever the plan was, you know, for his mobility and dealing with him, none of that has has any application at all to Flacco. None. And Flacco's a much more precision passer, especially on, you know, at this point in his career, he's going to pick apart. Uh, uh, you know, the soft zones and things of that nature, and things and that you might have played against Richardson. And you're not going to throw special, specially items in there that you didn't practice against Flacco that you would have practiced against Flacco. You're going to play your cover three and your base stuff, you know. And he knows it. Yeah, and you can't, and you can't make twenty year veteran, whatever he is, see ghosts like you were hoping to make Anthony Richardson mm -hmm. see ghosts. Uh, and throw you the ball a couple of times. You know, I remember uh, part of the pregame show, Mike Pursuta made the point, you know, uh, the key for the Steelers secondary is to catch the ball when Richardson throws it to him. <laughs> well, you know, yes, that, that's, that's a very valid point. You look at, you know, his, his record, his stats, his, um, the way games went when he played. Yes, that was definitely something that you could kind of expect or plan for. You want to make him, as Dick LeBeau would always say, you know, you don't have to sack the guy all the time. You need to make him think he feels pressure, and then he makes a quick decision that you can turn into a mistake. Well, that's, <laughs> that works for Richardson, yes. Yeah, right. Good point. Not Flacco. And, again, it's not like they knew about this Thursday where you had a day and a half or maybe, you know, a practice and a half, a couple of days of meetings to – you know, and because no, there was no even hint that Richardson was even limited in practice or any of that stuff. You know what I mean? It wasn't mm -hmm. like um, Justin Herbert, that situation where you, you're thinking, well, you know, he's going to have to gut it out. Maybe he's not going to be able to make the whole game. Yeah, no, you know, no inclination that you weren't going to see Anthony Richardson for 60 minutes. So, um, yeah, we're, you know, the, the and the Colts aren't that bad. I mean, they're just no, not. No. Um, and certainly so, not in their own uh, building. It's not I mean, the Patriot Cardinal losses last year. Right. Right. So, you know, again, yes, uh, and, I, and I will say, and I've said this, I, I wrote this. The thing that stung for me was that um, what you thought you could count on with this team every week was the defense and you couldn't count on the defense on Sunday. Those two first two possessions. That I mean, was, um, right. That was, that was shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yes, after that, that was, was a different surprising. story, but yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, the first, the first two plays deep pass to Pittman long run by Taylor. I'm thinking, you know, one or the other, <laughs> <laughs> not both, you know? Yeah. And, and, in succession like that. And then the next possession, same thing. So um, that to me was a little um, disappointing. And uh, in the immediate aftermath of that game, that was the thing that really was resonating with me. Was I wrong about this defense? Were we wrong about this defense? I don't think we were, but, um, you know, it also um, – it's damaging when what you think your absolute strength is is attacked successfully right out of the gate by the opponent. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Bob, uh, what do you think of all the stuff coming out of uh, Las Vegas now with the uh, Devontae Adams potential trade situation? <laughs> you mean it hasn't happened yet? It hasn't happened yet. No, imagine Seriously, that. Do whatever, do whatever you have. We're heading to down this. We're, we're dancing with this uh, yeah. again. Do you want to talk about, about yeah. Ayuk some more, too? This is going to be the next thing. Yeah, let's, let's talk about it every year. Sure, why not? Because 
how's he doing? <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, you know, I, I am certainly not opposed to exploring that. Okay. And uh, I, I don't, I won't argue that it wouldn't help them uh, because Devontae Adams is a real player. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, go out and get him, do whatever is necessary. That attitude is ridiculous. It just is. Uh, because, uh, again, you're, 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 it's, it's an entire roster. It's an entire salary cap. It's beyond one year. I mean, you're looking down the road at some things. I mean, Omar Khan is no dummy or neophyte when it comes to the salary cap. And if people think that he's just looking as far as the end of his nose in terms of planning for this, they're delusional. I mean, Omar has year, you know, years down the road plans. And, you know, he presents them to Art Rooney and they talk about it with Mike Tomlin. And, I mean, this, this is, you know, this is not something that, you know, strikes the Steelers like it strikes some foolish talk show host, you know, on, a, on another station that, uh, hey, yeah, let's do this. Every let's shiny object that done. becomes uh, available, mm-hmm. you got well, to give yeah, up whatever you right. need to give up to get them. Oh. Right. Or, you know, like your dog. You have your dog outside, and you're talking to your dog or trying to change it, and the squirrel runs by, and the dog, you know, just, wow, squirrel. And everything <laughs> you've been saying or whatever is lost. Well, that's what a lot of, you know, this kind of uh, talk seems like to me. You just mentioned it, the next shiny, shiny object. So, you know, again, yes, look into it. If, 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 it, if they can make it work, I'm all in favor of it. Um, but you've got to have a price, what you're willing to pay, not only in terms of what you're going to give them, you know, they want, and who knows whether this is true too, but I'll, I'll just play along with what I've been hearing. They want a second round pick and something else. What's something else? What's yeah. that mean? Yeah. You know, um, and, <laughs> and I've seen, you know, well, the Steelers, why not give a second round pick? They haven't had a good second round pick in forever. Well, how about Joey Porter Jr. and Zach Frazier? Do how about, how about them? George Pickens? <laughs> right. right, yeah. I mean, so, um, again, as I said, everything's got to be an absolute statement. Um, you know, it's, it's black or white, one end of the spectrum or the other. Uh, and, I don't know, kind of wears me out after a while. I, it's, I, maybe Bob, it's the world that we now live in yeah. where we, we talked it. about it the other day. It's almost like everything is now, the uh, you know, the, the election. And we've, we've seen it with, with Fields and Russell Wilson stuff. If you, if you say anything positive about Russell Wilson, you're, you must hate Justin Fields. <laughs> if you say anything negative about Fields, even in, while talking positively about him, well, you're just a Russell Wilson apologist. Like it, there's there's no in betweens on anything. You can't you can't possibly like both players if you if you have any kind of criticism of one or the other or say anything positively about one or the other. It, it's it's just it, this is where we're at now. Yeah, and I think uh, you know it seems to me that somebody who's in the crosshairs right now is Najee Harris. Yeah, you know, he stinks. Uh, he can't run the ball. Quit giving it to him find somebody else, bench him, cut him, you know, whatever the ridiculous um, statements and or uh, proclamations are. Uh, you know, for me, though, uh, the way I see it is, um, you know, this is, a guy, <laughs> this is a guy who, again, two weeks ago, he was being praised for running angry and not going down easy and, you know, being a tough guy and, you know, all of that stuff. And now he's you know, two weeks later, he's, he's absolutely the worst. Um, I, for me, I, what I would think um, a good way to approach it would be trying to figure out, you know, the kinds of run, running plays that he's – that are being called for him. Are they, they somehow uh, obvious to the defense? Because I, I truly – I don't think I've ever seen a running back – have so much trouble getting to, to the line of scrimmage clean as Najee Harris. Mm-hmm. Nobody that I can remember. I mean, um, is it his fault? I don't know. Um, I'm not, you know, uh, smart enough for that stuff, but 
darn it, it seems to me that if you've got to break two tackles to get to the line of scrimmage, that's not the running back's fault. I said yesterday that it's, it sure seems like linebackers and safeties trigger downhill faster when he's in the game than anyone I've seen. But uh, my question for you is this, is I know a lot of our younger listeners are kind of like, what's all the fuss about this week? Cowboys, Steelers. I mean, it's just an NFC team playing an AFC team. <laughs> it's four, Every four years they do it. Well, I guess you're not one of our younger listeners. So what's <laughs> Cowboys, Steelers mean to you? Well, I mean, this is this goes all the way back to, you know, I mean, the the Steelers um, played the Cowboys in the Cowboys' first ever game in the NFL. Mm-hmm. The Cowboys scored the first touchdown in their franchise history against the Steelers. Um, so neither one of the teams were very good in 1960 or whatever it was. Whenever the Cowboys came in, it was the 60. League. Yeah. Okay, um, but you know. These franchises go all that way back. Um, and they played twice a year. Yeah, then, people I forget think, right? during yeah. the 60s, during most of the 60s, they were in the same division. So they played twice yeah. a year. Well, and then the other thing is, um, then when it became, when Chuck Noll was hired in 1969, then it became the classic, um, you know, Mike Tomlin always talks about styles make fights. Well, in the 70s, the Styles, you know, Dallas was the computer team. Supposedly they used computers to draft players and whatever. And, you know, the Steelers were old school, block and tackle, you know, that kind of stuff, run the ball. You know, the Cowboys always do doing all the shifts on offense and the you know, linemen standing up and, you know, before every snap of the ball and the flex defense. And, you know, the Steelers lined up pretty much the same people all the time. Landry and his suit, Miss Fedora, and you know, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, so, thing. I mean, this is this is this has been like this for a long time. And then the Super Bowls, you know, you played two Super Bowls in one decade, um, and those those were the the two preeminent teams of the 1970s. Uh, the outcomes of those two Super Bowls dictated who was the team of the decade, particularly the one in '78, because at that point. They had both won a couple of times. Two. Yeah. Yes. And it, the yeah. winner of that game in 78 was going to be the team of the decade, more than likely. Right. Now, the Steelers would come back and win again, mm-hmm. um, but winning that that one in particular meant that the Steelers had the, the upper hand on being the team of the decade. you got Hall of Fame coaches and quarterbacks and, and Hall of Famers everywhere, and, you know. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, there was a lot of, you know, younger fans um, know what Steelers-Ravens is like, the hate the backbiting, yeah. you know, that kind of the sniping. Well, the, the, one of the great lines, I mean, Chuck Knoll, after Super Bowl thirteen, you remember the the um, pass interference penalty um, against, was it Benny Barnes against Swan later in that game, and then the next play was a touchdown, and the, the Steelers then took a two-touchdown lead, 35-17 or whatever, whatever it was. And – Landry was just irate about that pass interference call. And he was irate about it, irate about it, talked about it, talked about it. So the Steelers then, when they had their ring ceremony and they got their rings, and and that was the gaudiest ring of all the ones in the 70s. All the other ones were pretty simple. You know, one diamond for one first one, two diamonds for the second one, four diamonds for the fourth one. The third one, though, was one. It almost looked like, you know, a well, a toned down version for sure, but the kind of rings you see now. Mm-hmm. And they present them to the, the Steelers, and Chuck Knoll, you know, he's asked about the ring. <laughs> and Knoll holds up the ring, and he said, yeah, and if you push this little button over here, you can hear Landry, he's still bitching. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's the kind of stuff that went on between these two franchises back when. Uh, and you know, uh, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of history there, a lot of hatred, I guess, especially for teams that didn't play very often once the the merger came about in 1970. Yeah, for sure. And it, uh, we'll get to renew those rivalries. That's why it's the, the Sunday night game this week. It's a big one. And, uh, both a teams, lot of primetime games. I mean, yeah, absolutely. This is, this well, will only be the second time. The ste- or third time, I should say, the Steelers and Cowboys have met in prime time. Yeah. Hard to believe. 
Yeah. Um, they met on they some other pretty big stages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and but I mean, even for a, a good while, uh, the Steelers and Cowboys played every preseason. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, and, they, and a lot of times it was the last game of the preseason. You know, Chuck Noll liked it as a good test because it, it was different than the last preseason game. You know, they didn't treat it like a glorified scrimmage. I mean, they actually played. You know, the regulars played more in the last preseason game than they did in any of the other ones. And the Steelers would go to Dallas, too. I mean, it wasn't um, too much of a home-and-home kind of situation so much in the preseason. The Steelers would go there. Chuck liked it hot and humid. You got that in Dallas at that time of the year, and you went against a top-quality team that, um, you know, they had some good players, and their coach was playing it the same way. And so, uh, you know, it was, a, as Mike Tomlin might say, two trains, one track. That was the attitude. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Bob, we got to let you go. We kept you over over here. But we'll uh, see you on Sunday. Uh, can't wait for that one, Sunday night, Steelers versus Cowboys. We'll see how that works out for the Steelers if they bounce back off of that uh, disappointing loss last weekend in uh, Indianapolis. Our guest has been Bob Labriola, editor of Steelers Digest and Steelers.com. He is Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lally. You're listening to The Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. Welcome back. I am Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson. And Matt, uh, good stuff there from Bob Labriola. Yeah, yeah. Um, And, uh, I mean... Nobody knows the history of the Steelers quite like Labs. And it's not just because he's old. It helps. But he also, <laughs> but yeah. he also helps set up all the, the Steelers uh, museum stuff. And his, From what I understand, every word that you read in there was written by him. Yes. Every, you know? when, if you go to the museum. Which is pretty cool, by the way. You yeah. guys should check it out. Um, we should do another show from there soon. Yeah, that'd be fun. That would be good. Um, With fans around. But we went to it was like before it was open, I think. Yeah, yeah, we were the only ones in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Bob wrote every word of text yeah, that is in there, and there's a lot. There's yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, quite the undertaking there, and they do change it regularly. Oh, okay. I guess the updates. It's not the and, same. Yeah, yeah. It's not the same display. If you were there two years ago, there's some different things in there now that. Uh, so the only time I was there was when we broadcast it from. It probably looks different now. We gotta make there's, that happen. Yeah, that'd be fun. That would be fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and especially now that we're on video. Yeah, right, that would, right. That, that would be even cooler. It's set up in a cool spot. With, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of stuff in there. It's pretty neat. We could actually walk through with video, Tyler, and do a, and, <laughs> and just kind of talk about each display. How about that? How, uh, you love that idea? There we go. There we, we just go. Boom. Brainstormed an idea right here on the show. I like it. Yeah. So, uh, anyways. No, but the lab's always good. Yeah. Regular contributor to the show. Um, So, I wrote a piece today. It actually came out today on Steelers.com about the, the Steelers Cowboys history. Okay. And you should check that out. I put a lot of work into that. Uh, but, um, you know, it, for younger fans, it just isn't the ma- – I mean, anybody who is in Justin or Tyler's age group, mm-hmm. the Ravens are the Steelers' biggest rival. Yep. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. No question. Um, for people who are 40-ish and over, mm-hmm. maybe 45 and over – you're still kind of getting into that range. You almost have to be 50 or older to remember the the Cowboy Steelers games. Being... Yeah, so I'm 51. I was born in '73. I mean, there was the, the, the Super Bowl in '95 was there, and and, and that a lot of yeah. that history got dredged up, but it wasn't quite because the Steelers didn't win that Super Bowl. First of all, and the sure. Cowboys were kind of a a second coming of, of a second dynasty. The Steelers had a similar showing then in the mid 2000s, right? Where right, they right, won right. three, you know, they went to three Super Bowls and won two. So like when I was brought up with all my Pittsburgh family that taught me how to be a Steeler fan and football fan, blah, blah, blah. It was the Raiders are your most hated, then the Cowboys, even though we don't see them very often, then we can get into the division. Yeah. You know, I'm like, and my family and a lot of the fan base I knew at the time were, they're pretty boys down there. You know, we're steel workers. We're tough guys. It would never be America's team, you know, that type of thing. But there's also a lot of similarities, like two awesome head coaches, Probably the two best quarterbacks of the 70s. You know, Hall of Famers everywhere. everywhere. I mean, everywhere. I mean, those Cowboy teams were awesome. And I'm a, I am mean, I'm older than, or younger than Labs, but I always do this series history thing for Matt Stats. And I'm like, why do these teams play so much at the beginning of their existence? They were in the and same I division. Didn't, I didn't understand. I didn't know yeah. that part. Right? When the Cowboys came into, into the league, the first year they weren't in the same division okay. as an expansion team. Then the Minnesota Vikings came in 
the next year, I think it was the Vikings, and they became the team that went to the – This is the, early 60s, What right? was the NFL West, and the Cowboys then moved to the NFL East, okay. East Division, and have stayed in the East Division since. Um, Which is weird that they're in the East. But that's that's where that's where that's that's, why that's where that East. sprung from. Um, uh, New York, Washington. I mean, those those teams are in the East. Yeah, Dallas. Isn't. But they had th- those. You know, those were their rivals back in the day. Uh, since the 1970 merger, mm-hmm. when the Cowboys went to stayed in the NFC, the Steelers moved to the AFC. The Steelers have produced 40 seasons with a re- winning record. The Cowboys are second with 37. Wow. The Cowboys lead the league during that period with 10 win seasons in 10 win seasons um, with 29. The Steelers are tied for second with 27. Wow. The Steelers have a 24 uh, NFL best 24 division titles since the merger. The Cowboys are tied for second with 22. Okay. <laughs> the Steelers have the most wins in the NFL since 1970 with 517. The Cowboys are second with 497. Wow. Okay, I mean, maybe more similarities than we tend to think. I mean, for a long time, these two teams have been the premier teams in the league. Yeah, yeah. I mean, different areas of the country, owners are very different over the years, too. I mean, like, Jerry Jones is not a Rooney-like type of owner in any way, shape, or form. But consistent success, you know, and I think both fan bases kind of expect it, too, like, They've gone through some things. You know, when's when's the last time we won a playoff game? You know, that yeah. kind of thing. Like you just expect it like it's your God given right. Yeah. You know? It happens. The first game in Cowboys history was against the Steelers. That's a lab set. I didn't in, know. And they caught at the, the Cotton Bowl, yeah. the Steelers won 35 28 against the expansion uh Cowboys, who went 0 eleven and one that season. Wow. So even their first season wasn't good. They didn't get good until about 1964, 1965 is when they started to and then they went on the run of twenty one consecutive season, winning, uh, seasons of not having a losing record, which the Steelers can match this year. Okay, right, right, <laughs> it's a, it's a dead on. And I know this, so I don't remember the exact details, but there was a stretch like the Bob Lilly years or early Landry where they were like the Bills. Like they were yeah. very close, very close, but can't win the big one. Yeah. And then they win the big one. The you Packers know, were right. there and some other yeah, teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was, it, it, I mean, there's a lot of similarities between the franchises in I mean, even of, the cities are very different, but high school football and football is really big in Western PA yeah. in Texas. You know what I mean? Yeah, which Football's plays into the popularity them, right? of both the teams. Right, you know, right, right. They're, they're both within the fabric of – and both but teams are nationwide brands. And too. both teams are nationwide brands, as yeah, I was yeah. just going to say. Okay. I mean, there aren't that many teams that are that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the Packers come to mind. Certainly the Chiefs now, but not before. No, the not, Patriots not most be, of my life. The Patriots now. became that. People may not know this, but you know, in this in the eighties, the Patriots were junk. They were nobody much cared fun about to watch. Yeah, nobody cared they about were, the Patriots. They weren't a draw. Even in the nineties, yeah, right. I mean, their best player was a guard. Yeah, <laughs> for like twenty years, you know. Yeah. So, anyways, let's get to a break. That's going to do it for hour number one of the drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. Matt and I will be back with hour number two, right after this. Welcome back to hour number two of the drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. I am Dale Lolly. He is the Matt Williamson. And, of course, uh, we are here from four to six every day on the Steelers Nation radio and on demand available. Uh, the podcast is available on the Steelers official mobile app. And, of course, you can also watch on uh, YouTube uh, later in the in the day here as well. Listen to it tomorrow as you're sitting in, you're sitting in your Whatever office. Whatever you're doing, and, right? Yeah. Just throw the, throw the show on and... Throw the earbuds in. Yeah. People think you're working. I've been getting a lot of tweets, people, that are enjoying the video, too. You know, they're just they're putting it up on their TVs and, you know, great. Boy, that's kind of scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of us. I don't know that I should be uh, seen in, in full <laughs> HD right now, but uh, um, okay. Uh, get moving on here, Matt. Um, it's time for the Fantasy Football Focus. We'll take a look around the league on Wednesday here and see who is in and who did not practice today. And leading off things is Tank Dell. Officially limited today at practice oh, really? for the Houston Texans with that chest injury. He's a hot waiver wire pickup, and you know he's in a lot of leagues, but his stock seems to be skyrocketing, and I think it should. He's somebody that I've been kind of targeting because I don't think ATN should be an every down player. So no Tank Dell. You're thinking of Tank Bigsby? Oh yeah, different tanks. <laughs> okay, I knew they that. they couldn't be more I'm different sure. physically as right. well. There are not many tanks out there, but yeah. I, I just heard tank. One yeah, runs yeah. like a tank. The other one is. Nicknamed Tank, and even though he's only really 170 pounds. Right. Okay. It's a different take. Yeah. And different tank. <laughs> Dell's great, but 
They have three, you know, two other real yeah. good receivers and Robert Woods, and you know, they'll be okay. But, I mean, it's getting a little frustrating, I'm sure, as a Dell owner. Because More concerning for them, Matt, is that Joe Mich- Mixon officially a non-participant on Wednesday again. They're still not running the ball well this year either, and Akers doesn't look great. I mean, they were better with Mixon, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, he, he ran the ball well when mm-hmm. he was out there. Uh, Aaron Rodgers with a knee injury officially limited on Wednesday. That's probably just an old guy thing, but eh, you know, Rogers, they actually called it something. He though. said he's dealing with some swelling in his knee. He's an odd fella, and he's older, but I mean, he was complaining about the weather and stuff this past week, and it's really ugly, sloppy game against Denver. And now they got to go over the over the pond, yeah. you know, like for a nine thirty a.m. Eastern start. I could just see him being grumpy about all of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> or just being We're talking about the about guy who, who had his, his amazing trip to Egypt yeah. during minicamp. Can't do that. He couldn't be there, there, but he doesn't want to go across the pond. I don't know. Who knows? Right. Uh, Travis ATM with a shoulder limited at okay. practice on. This brings yeah, Tank Bigsby, Dell right. into, or Tank Bigsby. Bigsby. Yeah. Um, Bigsby might be a start. I mean, that's a bad team, but if ATN's even limited with bye weeks, I mean, I got a one dynasty league. I didn't realize, like, my whole squad <laughs> is off this week and plus injuries and you know in addition so and just to start digging pretty deep for some of these rosters uh evan ingram with the hamstring officially limited on wednesday that's progress though that's I don't progress think he's even done that. yeah but you need to see him get a full practice in before mm-hmm. you trust that one I and mean, we were talking tight ends to start the show he might be a nice addition I mean, I, I heard Hawkinson's practicing again yeah. soon. I mean, Friday like, he's going to have a full practice. It'll be the start of his clock. Yeah, you know, right. So, so he's probably uh, still a couple weeks away. I would imagine, but I maybe the tight end position is getting a little infusion. I think the talent. Vikings have their bye week in a couple of weeks, so he probably comes back. Well, they're overseas that. too. I bet it's yeah. next week. Yeah, I, I would. I would bet. Uh, Gabe Davis limited on Wednesday. Tank yeah. Bigsby, the aforementioned Tank <laughs> <Okay>. Bigsby. <laughs> I'm just scrolling down here. He had a shoulder, and he's limited in Wednesday's practice. Yikes. Well, you already know my take on that then. <laughs> <laughs> no good news for the Jags. Though. No. I mean, it's been a rough year for the Jags. Uh, surprise, surprise, Teron Armstead with a concussion limited on Wednesday. Never played a full season. Uh, he missed with last week's game uh, with that concussion. Limited, for, though, is a step in the right direction. Yeah, yeah, he might play still. Yeah. Um, Skylar Thompson listed as limited on Wednesday. It looks like it's going to be... I'm Huntley not a big again. Huntley fan, but I think he's the better player. I guess. I mean, he's he's been to a Pro Bowl. He's wow. <laughs> humorous. I, I, we've talked about this on my my other podcast that the second Tua got hurt, I would have called up for Jimmy G. I yeah. mean, he knows the system. You know, give me somebody or try to get Tannehill off the street. I mean, like something. You had to do something more than you did. Yeah. Well, on, and on the other side of that, Odell Beckham practiced in full on Wednesday. He I missed the first four that. games. But it doesn't matter because doesn't they matter. can't throw the football. If Tyree kills, I mean, we're just talking fantasy. If Tyree kills now a wide receiver two, and Waddle's yeah, I don't even a wide think he's receiver that. four, Tyree yeah, kill might be a wide three. receiver three right now. So Odell's not close to being. He's like a wide more. receiver seven. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, he's not even somebody you can have. No. Uh, Jeff Wilson Jr. I did Limer. power ranks today, and I had them thirty-two. They're bad. They're really bad. They are bad. Jeff Wilson Jr. A limited participant uh, Wednesday for. Those bad Miami Dolphins. Okay. I mean, again, it kind of made me crazy. I'm even in a Chan owner. But if that's your goal line back, I mean, like, <laughs> come on, man. You're just bouncing off people. I mean, get Wilson in there. At least have some physicality. Uh, Raheem Mostert with the chest injury officially limited on Wednesday as well. They need one of those two guys back. Yeah, it would be nice. Yeah, I wouldn't hold my breath on Mostert. Uh, David Njoku officially limited at Wednesday's practice for the Browns. So he's out there. He's another one of these tight ends that might... Help the position overall a little bit. And I mean, he's been out long enough since week one that maybe there's some leagues he got cut in. That's possible. Yeah. I mean, so. He's not the, you know, if it was Kelsey, you'd hold on to him. Right. You know, I mean, maybe people just got tired of it. Uh, Jack Conklin still sitting out <clears throat> practices for the uh, Browns on Wednesday, their right tackle. Yeah. Uh, he's got a hamstring. They're just all They're really kinds of a mess. Miles right um, Garrett with the Achilles now, before it was all kinds of stuff. But okay. I, didn't, I don't remember them being listing Achilles. No, right. It was a foot. Then it was an ankle. There was also a wrist in there, I think, or ribs. A, I mean, it's not a torn Achilles, or he moving no. around. But it's you know, rarely do you have an Achilles on the list. Cause yeah, is he strained or what? No. Yeah, uh, he missed practice Wednesday. Nick Chubb officially limited uh, on Wednesday as uh, he started his clock. 
I'm rooting for him. I know he's a Brown, but he's a really easy guy to root for. Hopefully he comes back and gets his career back to where it was. I don't know. I mean, he's... I'm going to hold my breath. It's he's happen. not young now. No, not at all. He's had a lot of wear and tear, a couple of major knee injuries, and they have a bad O-line. Yeah. Other than that, it's pretty fine. Like, I'm not running out to pick him up. No. Stash him on my bench for a while. Yeah, I mean, I, if, you, if you drafted him and stashed him on your bench... Or if you had an IR spot or something. I guess, but... Right. Uh, Keenan Allen officially off the injury report on Wednesday, so it looks like he is now 100% or as close to 100% as he can be healthy. I don't know if that offense can support three receivers. Yeah, I mean, and a, and a tight end. Yeah. I mean, they ran the ball a little better, but... Somebody would lose out on that, and I would guess, I'm going to guess it's probably Komet. I think Komet would really suffer. Yeah. yeah, which we've talked about the status of uh, tight ends in the league, and it's not good. I mean, he's been okay, at least. You take him out of the equation, Yeah, what do you got? I know. Uh, Noah Brown with the with uh, Washington official. Washington, yeah. yeah, he's commander now. Uh, he's a groin uh, limited practice on Wednesday. Uh, Zach Ertz, a non participant on Wednesday, but that was for rest. Yeah, so he's an older guy. Yeah. yeah, Cole Komet limited at practice on Wednesday. The aforementioned Cole Komet, he's dealing with a knee issue. Okay, well, that further hurts his stock. Yeah, Austin Ekelar. Uh, logged a limited practice today. He's coming back from a concussion, so that's a sign. That's a step in the right direction. I mean, that offense puts up so many points. I mean, it was McNichols was the two last week, and he was usable. I mean, yeah. nobody had him in their lineup, but I, I might put Eckler in my lineup on a bye week right now. Brian Robinson with a knee didn't practice today. Oh, wow. So, so maybe McNichols uh, won't be owned just by his no sister Christy. Right, right. So, yeah. sister Christy. No. Sister Christy. Yeah. Christy uh, McNichols. Uh, I know what you're talking about now. She was a star in the 70s. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I remember I was born I was young. Well, but I was young, and that was, you know. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. See what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, Benjamin Brian Robinson. Anthony Richardson with the hip issue, officially limited on Wednesday. I assume they'll insert him right back in. That was weird, though. It's kind of like the Levis situation. Because he, here's the thing. So he gets hurt initially. Yeah. They take him out for two plays. He comes back in, calls his own number on another running play, and then just kind of crumples to the ground. Right, right. And they got to come out and get him again. Mm-hmm. Um, it might be a little more serious than... I mean, a hip could be bad. Yeah. I mean, I doubt it's just a bad bruise or a bone bruise. It could be bad, bad. Yeah. Hip pointers are not... They're, they're painful. I've had them before. Oh, really? Yeah. Not fun. And he's a runner. And he's a runner. That is significant for him. If he, I mean, he can't... wouldn't be in my top 12 right now. If no. If he's limited. You no. Know I mean, I, mean right. he, I don't know that he's in your top 12 regardless. Right, right. But bad. certainly not. Uh, Mike Evans cleared to go. He is good to go for Thursday night's game. Okay. Um, so that's good news for them. Ray yeah, Ray the McLeod Falcons, on the right. other side of that, good to go. Yeah, Falcons versus uh, Tampa Bay Falcons, Buccaneers. Buc- that's not a bad Thursday night. Yeah. Kalijah Kansi will not play defensively for them, uh, for the uh, Buccaneers. Uh, Luke Getke with a concussion okay, unavailable, a uh, but Tristan Wirfs, good to go. Okay. So okay, that's your uh, injuries for this uh, this game. Um, looking here, uh, Jordan Love officially limited at practice on Wednesday, but he's back. They're gonna they're gonna monitor him. That's yeah, I yeah. wouldn't get too crazy about that. Luke Musgrove though was limited or was sidelined at practice on Wednesday. Um, I don't think he's played for a couple weeks, right? Yeah, Tucker Craft. Uh, is a guy that, well, when Musgrave hasn't played in the past, yeah. Kraft uh, has seen a little bit of a spike. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what to make of that tight end situation. I really like both players a lot. Yeah. They just kind of, it's Can't it's almost a, it's bit. almost a, the Raiders situation with, with Bowers and Mayer. Yeah. They almost need Adams to get traded. Yeah. Yeah. You know, which I don't think Adams is going to play another game in the Raider uniform. I don't think so either, not yeah. from everything that's happened. Uh, Deontay Johnson dealing with some minor minor ankle soreness, uh, but he has been very playable the last two weeks. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's open all the time like he was here, and he's got a professional quarterback getting on the ball. He's a definite starter. Yeah. Damian Pierce did not practice again on Wednesday for the uh, Houston Texans. He's dealing with a hamstring. Could be Akers again. Could be Akers again. He hasn't done anything with that. Uh, Michael Mayer, who we just mentioned – He's dealing with something personal, uh, and there's no timetable for his return. Oh, really? So, okay. interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that helps Bowers a little. Yeah. But it's not like Bowers is off the field very much. Yeah. Devontae Adams, of course, not practicing on Wednesday. Uh, Pierre Strong, uh, with the hamstring, uh, participated in practice for the Cleveland Browns. Um, 
Khalil Shakir with an ankle did not practice today. I think he's their most valuable receiver. Yeah. I mean, it's not an, a slam dunk starter for fantasy. but He's at least a wide receiver three every week. Yeah, I guess. I mean, with some buys this week, he might be a two. Yeah, and he definitely helps Allen. I mean, he's their best guy. Yeah. He, he looks good, too. Um, they're saying TJ Hawkinson could return by week seven. Of course, that would be the though, yeah. Well, that would be a, if he starts practicing on Friday. Um, okay, that would be. The, I assume they're off next week since they're in London. According to uh, Robert Sala, Brees Hall will maintain his short yardage role. Um, he had ten carries for four yards. Brutal right? on Sunday. The weather and, was bad. It was an ugly game, but still, still right. Um, and, and Allen, the backup is. It's pretty good. Yeah. So, and he's Allen a, seems like more of the short yardage type. And though. he's a big back. That's yeah. the other thing about it. Like big kind of straight line power guy. Yeah. Uh, Kendrick Bourne had his 21 day practice window opened. You interested at all in Kendrick Bourne? No. Yeah. Not really. Me either. No. You definitely <laughs> do better than that. Uh, Laramie Tunsil not practicing Wednesday for the Houston Texans. Mm, that's not going to help the run game. No, not at all. Um, Dalvin Cook will remain on the practice squad this week. I was wondering if he might get Dallas. the call up. Yeah. So, I mean, that's for fantasy. I don't think any of them are usable. I mean, that's what that maybe the least useful fantasy backfield in the league. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Yeah. Because nobody has a clear defined role necessarily, and they don't run the ball particularly well. And even uh, what's his name is now the third down back. Um, newer dude. This is worth noting. Trey Hendrickson considered day to day. Wow, for the uh, Cincinnati Bengals, he's like the only good thing on the bad defense right now. Yeah, um, that that would be very troubling for Cincinnati, which really needs to win this week. Really needs to win this week. They have the Ravens, right? Yeah. Oh man, at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of the most important players. There's no question. Yeah. Um, if he can't go, I don't know what they have. They just there's not a lot there. No defense will get run on like crazy. Probably no matter what. Uh, final thing here, Trey McBride returned to practice on Wednesday. Yeah, I thought he, he was dealing with there. a concussion. Um, Other tight end spike, you know, right. I mean, he's as good as any of them right now. Yeah, I mean, he gets peppered with targets, and they, their offense needed him. Yeah, I was shocked how little their offense did against Washington. But yeah. I'm not bailing on it. I mean, I still think it's a good offense. Yeah, I think he's he's a guy he's that – He's important. Yeah, I mean, if we were redrafting now, would he be tight end one? I think so. Yeah, Kelsey with the injury to Rice – is now more exciting than he was a week ago, but he wasn't exciting a week ago. No. You know, I don't know how much Kelsey can withstand, too. If we redraft a break now, Pat Fryermuth like a top seven or eight tight end? Wow. But who's ahead of him? Bowers, Goddard, Kelsey, McBride. Kincaid hasn't done anything, but I probably would take him ahead of him. Ferguson. Ferguson's been good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's probably Kittle. Kittle really hasn't done much. No, I know. But I don't know who I'd take if it was from here. A lot of these guys are dealing with injuries and stuff, too. It's messy. Yeah. It's real messy. Ingram should be back soon, but I don't know if I'd take him over him, considering the state of that team. Yeah, their passing game might be broke. Yeah. I mean, in the Joku's kind of the same way. You know, it's a terrible situation. I don't want any any Browns. I don't want any Browns. Right. I mean, he would be definitely a top 10 type of guy. Yeah. I mean, not Andrews. Certainly not Andrews. (laughs) Right. Not Not even likely. No. Not Pitts, not likely. A lot of guys you're counting on are not count onable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how about this weird situation? It's a, it, it's the same thing in in the league we're in. I have Rishi Rice, and my only tight end is Andrews. Yes. And someone cut Pitts, maybe I'll pick him up, or Taysom Hill, but he's hurt, or whatever. I'm gonna I want somebody. But I really don't want to cut anybody. And I'm afraid to cut Rishi Rice now because there's all this talk that maybe it's not as bad as we think. Like, I, I don't want him – I'm holding him at least another week or another couple of days. Like, it's kind of a weird situation because they haven't put him on IR. And there's talk that maybe he the injury's not as bad as it looked. But it looked horrible. Looked and horrible. everyone in the world assumes he's done for the year. Yeah. But if I put him on waivers and you pick him up in a week, and then I'll be sad. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like, well, let's right put now, it this I think way. you got to hold him for a day or two. I don't think he plays in the next four weeks. I don't think True. he plays in the next six weeks. I don't think he plays the rest of the year, yeah. deep down. But yeah. I am not making that mistake, you know? 
But I'm waiting until the But end. you might lose out on the tight end. Yeah, there's not even really good ones out there, though. I might just start Andrews and you can hope pick he up. sees the field. You can pick up Pitts. Yeah, I'm really <laughs> souring on Pitts, too. The usage hasn't been great. I mean, I don't know. I'm still kicking it around, though. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling owners of Rice, he's probably a 98% chance safe to cut. But there's funny business going on right now. Yeah. You know, they have not declared him out for the year or put him on IR. Well, there's no rush to do it because right, right. you know they can wait until all the way till Friday to mm-hmm. then call somebody up or do something, you know, something along those lines. And that's what I'm doing is I'm I'll pick up a tight end on Saturday morning when they put him on IR, you know. All right. Well you know. yeah, that's just some of the games that yeah, this teams play. The stuff works. Absolutely. He is Matt Williamson. Uh, I am plays Thursday. He does play Thursday. <laughs> that doesn't do you any good. <laughs> Uh, that's going to do it for the Fantasy Football Focus. He's Matt Williamson. I'm Dale Lally. You're listening to The Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. We will be back with more right after this. Welcome back. I am Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson. And, Matt, we haven't looked uh, the last couple weeks here at Dan Pazuda's quarterback rankings. Oh, okay. For 33rd on the 33rd team. team. Uh, he does a good job with yeah, that. Yeah, Dan does do a good job. Uh, so I thought we'd take a look at that now and see where uh, where's Justin Fields come in at on this. And it might be lower than... Some Steeler fans would think. Okay. I'm um, kind of actually surprised that, that he's as low as he is with some of the guys who, who are ahead of him. Uh, number 32, however, on Dan Pazuda's list on the 33rd team. Well, that would be Bo Nix, who threw for – did I mention he threw for minus seven yards and a yeah, half? Yeah, you like that. No sacks. That, to me, is crazy. That is insane. Crazy. That's the, that might be the craziest stat I've ever seen in an NFL game. It's really hard to Because do. you don't get negative – you don't get negative yards – on the quarterback for a sack that goes against a team, right, 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 right. I mean, he you completed have to throw seven, behind the line of scrimmage, and someone has to run around and get tackled. Yeah, right. He completed seven passes for negative seven yards. It's pretty his rough. long pass. I looked at. I looked at. I'm like, wow. Well, I think his long pass was two yards. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> two. <laughs> that being said, isn't he better than the Miami guys? I mean, I assume they're good. He picks the 32. He thinks he's going to start. He picks this the 32 week. starters. Yeah. Yeah. I would say so, but that was pretty bad. I mean, it's as bad as it gets. He hasn't even looked a little bit better. You know, like no one of the. I'm not comparing to Daniels, who we're not going to talk about for a while, I'm sure. But they both played a ton of college football. They should look a little more accl- He should look a little more acclimated to the league. Nix is tied for second in the NFL with 19 broken up passes. Defenses are just sitting on the short passes and saying, "Yeah." Go ahead, try to throw it over the top. Yeah, all this efficiency, you know, short throws. People catch on to that stuff pretty quick. Yeah. Number 31. Again, not a Miami Miami Dolphins quarterback. It's Deshaun Watson. He's horrendous. (laughs) I I, I tweeted out some EPA stuff today, which actually had paints or paints field in a really good light. But Watson was last. I mean, last. That's what he's put on the field. And the the worst contract in NFL history. And trade, probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which compounds it all. Hands down. Uh, number 30 is Tyler Huntley. Okay. I mean, Huntley's at least been around the league and did is okay. He's been a Pro Bowl guy. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Had that thrown out there a lot. <laughs> well, he went to the Pro Bowl. Oh, okay. He's yeah. good. You're right. I'm Even sorry. watching that game the other night, they interviewed Tyreek before. He was like, we got a Pro Bowl quarterback. We're fine. Yeah. Yeah. You keep telling yourself that. Yeah. You can, and then you're yelling at teammates on the sidelines <laughs> when he doesn't get the ball. <laughs> right. 29, this is up from 30, Will Levis. This tells you how bad the three guys behind him have been because he didn't do anything to go up. Well, no, he got hurt. That's where he belongs, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, Levis and Nick's are in the same neighborhood. Levis has more bright spots but less awful spots or more awful spots. At 28, up from 29 last week, is Gardner Minshew. Steelers will see him next week. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. Maybe I'd have him higher. Well, I really think he's a backup. Yeah, tell me who's uh, who you'd have higher him higher than. I say him and Brissett would be close. At twenty seven, down a spot is Brissett. Okay, I mean they're they're backups I like a lot. If you put Brissett, I don't like a lot. If you put Brissett with Minshew's the talent around Minshew, there'd be nowhere to go but up. Brissett I mean, would be a lot better than Minshew. Is my point? Oh, oh, oh. I thought you meant. Brissett would be a lot better. Even without Devonte Adams in there, you still have you still have Jacoby Myers. You still have Brock Bowers. Mm-hmm. You still have guys to get the football to. Brissett doesn't have anybody 
He's a tackling dummy right now. Yeah. I mean, he's just getting – Their offensive up. line is – is Hideous. They he just lost David well Andrews enough. for the season. Oh, I didn't even know that. Wow. Yeah, it's bad. They're on the same tier to me, but I do prefer Brissett. Um, at 26, down from 25, is Daniel Jones. Mind you, he's coming off the game that he had against the Cowboys where he completed like 80% yeah. of his passes. I'm not saying he's good, but he, he people are a little hard on him. You know, high pick, big apple, you know, like. Again, those, those numbers against Trevor Lawrence's numbers in the yeah, right, two guys right, drafted right. the same year, they're almost identical. Yeah. We're going to sit, we're not going to see Trevor Lawrence for a while on this list. Jones has had an equal season to Lawrence. Yeah. Uh, 25, down from 24, is Andy Dalton. Probably climbing. I mean, I think he's one of the best 32 on the planet right now. That's kind of scary. <laughs> At 24, down from 21, is Anthony Richardson. I think you have to put him lower. At 23, holding steady, is Justin Fields. I would have him higher. 23 is pretty rough. It's pretty rough. I would have him. For the way that he is playing. And I got people think that I hate Justin Fields or something. No, sure. he's playing well. He's playing well. And he's doing a lot of little things right. And he adds a lot with his legs. Let's just roll through the next couple. I'll, I'll see how, many, how much further up I would have. 22, holding steady is Caleb Williams. Justin Fields has been Fields better. Fields had a much better year than He's Williams. been much better than Caleb Williams And that's, we're not talking about who you want to build your team around or anything. Right. I mean, who's Fields had a better year. 21, down from 16, is Kirk Cousins. I don't know where you put him. I mean, he's kind of been rocky, but he's kind of trustworthy. I mean, you talk about career. 20, down from 19, is Derek Carr. Carr's had a better year than all those guys. He's calmed down. He's come back to earth drastically. Yeah. First two or three weeks, though, he was He was at like seven on one of these. Yeah, 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 there. which we knew was not going to hold up, but. This one, at 19, down from 18, is Sam Darnold. He's been way better than that. He's been better than that. Yeah. I would definitely have him the highest of anyone we've talked about. I think he's the only quarterback in the league that's thrown at least two touchdown passes in every game this year. I think you're right. He's done very – I mean, he's, he, once in a while he has a crazy moment. Yeah. But, you know, he always will. Well, at 18, though, down from 14 is Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence doesn't – He should be lower. He, he should be much lower than that. I don't care. Uh, I've always backed him, but – I mean, he's Fields playing badly. Better. He's playing badly, right? This is you could always make excuses for him that it's his surroundings. This year, you can't. And so there are still so many high level traits with Trevor Lawrence, but he's continually regressed in accuracy and decision making this season. I don't care what traits you. Yeah, have. Sam Darnold it. has lots of traits too, right? I mean, it'd be a different conversation if we were drafting all these guys for what you're going to do going forward. Yeah, not what they are today and what they've done this year. What they put on that what you put on the field is your legacy. It's your resume. Mm -hmm. It's zero wins and it's a lot of bad And his resume right has not been good this year. No. It wasn't good really last year. No. It's better. I mean he's going backwards. Yeah. I'm not ready to put him in like Watson land, but no, you're no. right. It's seventeen. Up from nineteen, Baker Mayfield. It's a pretty good year. I, I I probably would have him higher. Yeah. At 16, up from 20, is Jaden Daniels. That's fair. I think he's, he's been better he's than He's been better than that. He's been better than everybody below him at the, to this point. He's completing 80% of his passes. I mean, has he been better than Aaron Rodgers? Yes. I would say I think the answer is yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, in some guys that you just count on, you know? Yeah. I mean, he's been much better. He's, you know, again, if we had a redraft right now mm -hmm. of this – he goes higher than sixteenth. Yeah. If if even if you throw, you tell the teams at the end of the season we're going to throw everybody back into a barrel and you got to redraft it again. Yeah, and try to win but this year. Win this year with it with the, this quarterback. Okay. He'd have gone over everybody we've talked about. Yeah, and probably several more. Yeah. At fifteen, down from twelve, Jalen Hurts. He's not playing well. I'm I'm losing faith. I, I think they're going to regret that contract. Yeah, he's not played well. No. At 14, up from 15, Jared Goff. He couldn't have played any better. He was phenomenal, <laughs> but the first couple games were not were so rough. great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so I think that's proper, but he'll probably keep moving up. At 13, down from 11, is Aaron Rodgers. He, I mean, it's not like he's the problem. He's played okay, but he's not elevating anyone around him. Yeah. He's not that guy he's anymore. He's not the playmaker anymore. You know, yeah. I, I, he'd be a tough one for me to rank. 
But like Mayfield's probably had a better year than him. Yeah. You know. Daniel certainly has. Yeah, yeah. At twelve, down from thirteen is Brock Purdy. I think that's fair. He's played quite well. Wait, that's not right because he says last week he was thirteen and he has the down number on him. No, he's actually up. Okay, well he's been right in that neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, eleven. He wasn't ranked last week. He was number nine in week one, which tells you who it is. It's Jordan Love. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a big time player. I mean, he warmed up as the game yeah, went on yeah. last week and got better. That was and a better. tough chore earlier yeah. on too. Uh, at ten, down from nine is Kyler Murray. Did not have a strong show. Didn't have a great week. game. I might have him a little lower. Like Daniels has outplayed him this year. Yeah. 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 I played him last week. Yeah. Yeah. At nine, up from ten, Geno Smith. I'm there with him. He's playing I think well. He's been really, really good this year. Yeah, he's playing well. At eight, holding steady is Joe Burrow. I think that's fair. I don't think he's three or four at the moment. Yeah, he's not yeah, right. He's not playing his best. No. At seven, holding steady is Justin Herbert. I'd have Burrow ahead of Herbert right now. That's a tough one. I mean, he's playing so hobbled. He's effective. He has bad weapons. But I'd have to put him lower. Yeah, I mean, they've scored the last two weeks. Um, t- ten and what they have against the Steelers? Yeah. Ten I mean, and ten. The passing game hasn't been great all year. Yeah. Even when they were undefeated and they came here. At eight, or I'm sorry, six, I, down from five. The guy the Steelers are going to see this week, Dak Prescott. I'm okay with that. I mean, I think when it's all said and done, he'll be seven or eight, not top five. The Burroughs and some of those people might go past him, but he's a really good player. Yeah, this is a... any running game. He said he got the ball out quickly, an average of 2.4 seconds last week, and it worked uh, worked the short area of, of the field with 70% of his throws between 1 to 10 air yards. Okay. Last week against the Giants. Okay. Right. Now, they only scored 20, what was it, 20 points? I think so, yeah. They won 20 to 15 against the Giants defense. It's almost like they're they're using those sh- that short passing game as their running game. Yeah, I say I think it just helps them control the football, put it in your best, you know, best player's hands, him and Lamb. I also think it's a a little bit of an indictment on their protection too. Yeah. You know, like they have a big time interior presence like Hayward and they have two big time outside rushers and then Giants. Neither one's as good as TJ, but I would bet that Dallas does a lot of that in this game. Yeah, that that comes out quick. It's going to come out quick. Yeah. Uh, Number five up from six last week is C.J. Stroud. He's been phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, there's no running game. He's not the problem at all. Yeah. At four, holding steady, is Matthew Stafford. I'm another Mm. one. He's got no help. It's hard to – yeah. That's really high up there, but he's got no help. He's got no blocking. They do anything, it's because of him for the most part. But I probably would have him a couple spots lower. At three is Lamar Jackson. He's not even throwing the ball now. No. And when they are, when they are throwing the ball, they're not throwing it necessarily downfield. And I, I, he doesn't look the same to me this year. A little different. Um, he's he's passing up some throws. He's mm-hmm. he's he's not again a lot of. I mean, the big part of their passing game last week was just dumping it off to the running backs. I still would have him three though. I mean, I mean, he's hard to play to, against. Right, I mean, we're right, talking right, about right. quarterbacks. That's but the, if you want to make that argument, then you got to have Fields higher. Oh, I think Fields needs to be higher either way. I mean, of course, Fields isn't in this neighborhood, but yeah, yeah, I, Lamar would still be my three. You got to have Jaden Daniels higher. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of these no, guys, I, I, some I of these other saying. running quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, in terms of how hard are they to play against, mm-hmm. Lamar's still really hard to play against. But he's he's thrown fifteen passes a game. Mm-hmm. Would you be interested in Devontae Adams if you were them? No. Because I don't, I don't, I don't know that they want to change what they're doing. I mean, it's working. It's working. I don't know if they want to run Lamar as much as they are, but I, I did a list of ten teams that should at least call about Adams, and Baltimore was one. I mean, I, they could use him yeah, for sure, yeah. but I don't know that they try to win it all. I don't know that they would use him. I mean, to, I don't think he'd get he the targets get, you'd be happy. He wouldn't about, get the right? number of targets he would be happy with. No, nobody, no receivers like to go there for. 30 right. years. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, at two is Josh Allen. Yeah. One is Patrick Mahomes. I would have Allen over Mahomes right now. I would. I mean, if you're – see, that's hard because I was about to say, if you're judging on what they've done this year, Mahomes would be like 13. Yeah. You know what I mean? But are you going to respect s- him and may say he's the GOAT or not? You know what I mean? But we're seeing some of that with some of these other guys – 
you know, Burrow's not ha- – typically Burrow's in your top five. Mm-hmm. Well, he's at eight. Which is about where he's playing. Mahomes has thrown four interceptions in four games. He's I know. not He's not been great. He's only – and he's, what, he got six touchdown passes. I think Allen's been the best player in the league and yeah. would be my MVP right now. He's doing more with less right now. Mm-hmm. And I also think even like coming into this year, Allen was closer to Mahomes than people want to realize. I mean, like they don't have the same resume, Super Bowl victories. Yeah, I get know, it. I mean, I mean, Allen's Mahomes a is, superstar. Yeah, Mahomes. But are, you know, if we're going to do lists like this, um, then I don't know how don't I call would. it quarterback rankings. Call it Patrick Mahomes and everybody else. That's kind of what he deserves, though. <laughs> I mean, but he's not played that way. Hundred percent. But if we were saying, who do you want? If we just next week, if we just put the stats up, oh, it's close. What he's done, you know, versus everybody That's else. What I mean, he would be thirteen or he'd be fifteen. Or you know, he's, like he's not having a better year than Geno Smith. No, not even close. Um, I just want to pull this up real quick. Okay, go right ahead. This was that really nerdy thing I put. Uh, I just retweeted of. No, you did something nerdy. <laughs> of Hard EPA to believe. stuff. And their rankings go: Daniels one, Purdy, Burrow. Darnold, Allen, Geno, Kyler, Fields. Fields is kind of like at seven, right above Lamar. You know what I mean? And Mahomes is middle of the road. I mean, he's low on this one. I mean, Sam Darnold is completing 69% of his passes. He has 11 touchdown passes on 106 yeah. attempts. Yeah, he's been phenomenal. He's been, I mean, he's had a better year than Mahomes. Yeah. I mean, that, but no one's going to put Sam Darnold's over Mahomes on a quarterback. You know, by the way, they're 4 and 0 too. You know, that's yeah, yeah. It's not like he's garbage timing it up or yeah. anything like that. Or, you know, I mean, Daniel's numbers are as good as anybody. His completion percentage is through the roof. Yeah, he's Andy the reason, the R- he's the the reason why they're in first place right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I I would do Mahomes and everybody else, though. I would have done it the same way. But I probably would have did my write up say he's playing like a mediocre starter. And he kind of did say he's, you know, playing, not playing well right now. Uh, that doesn't mean he can't, mm-hmm. but or won't. You know, what if he plays this way all season? Then you start dropping him. Yeah. Then you start worrying a little bit, you know. Anyways, let's get to a break. He is the Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lally. You're listening to The Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. When we come back, well, I sat down with a, a Steelers defensive back today and had a little chat with him. Oh, cool. We'll hear who that was right after this. <laughs> And we are back. I'm Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson. And uh, Matt, uh, one of the uh, guys who's kind of flown under the radar during the Steelers' start here, to me, uh, has been Dante Jackson. Yeah. Uh, Despite everything that was going on around him last week, I thought he actually played really well last week against the Colts. I think he's played well every week. Yeah. I think he's a high-quality starting corner. If you look at it thus far, uh, he's given up 10 completions on 19 pass attempts. For 118 yards, he had no touchdowns allowed and an interception. That's a 52.6% completion rate. Yeah. Uh, passer rating uh, when, when teams have targeted him is 49.9. Okay. Which is really good. It's really good. I'm not even shocked by that. I mean, I would have guessed his numbers are high quality. You know what I mean? Yeah. We know Porter gets the one a high percentage of the time, but they also play a ton of cover three, you know, and he. And Porter's not been targeted. He's only been targeted 11 times. Okay. So, you know, again, they played four games. That means Jackson's getting two more targets per game per game. than Porter, but he's holding up in that in that situation. Well, I mean, you'll definitely take it. I mean, he's a good tackler. I know he's a little thinner. I didn't know how physical he'd be, but he relishes it. And he comes up, plays a run. He can run really well. He's a versatile guy. So he's been a really good addition. Absolutely. Well, I, I sat down and talked to Dante right. Jackson today. So let's uh, let's hear what Dante had to say. I'm assuming you faced the Cowboys before. Yeah. Before having- yeah. What uh, what kind of challenges does a CD? Um, he's a he's a great player. He's one of the best you know offensive players in this league. Uh, production level through the roof, skill play, skill level through the roof. Uh, yeah, he's a um, like I said, he's just a great player, man. He's a um, guy who can make every catch, guy who can run every route, um, even run run the ball from the backfield. So yeah, he's a very dynamic player. And they'll move him around all yeah. over the formation. He, he doesn't stay static. Yeah. Nah, nah, yeah, definitely move him around. Uh, definitely. Um, just got to put eyes on him, but I'm sure that's a game plan he's used to facing. Uh, but yeah, it's going to just take a all-11 effort. I saw some stats on, on Dak Prescott today. He's been actually better when pressured this season. 
that's not something that usually happens with quarterbacks. But when, when his numbers when pressured are much better yeah. than when he's not been pressured. I mean, Dak is one of the best in this league for a reason. Uh, he's a guy who rarely makes mistakes. Um, he's a very efficient, uh, very great passer, tight windows, long ball. I mean, he can do everything. Uh, he's just he's a great quarterback. In terms of, of, of what you guys are doing on the back end, it was last week kind of a blip? I know you had a, you had some PBs down the field last week, but overall for the in sec, his secondary, was that kind of a blip on the, on the radar there? It just it seemed like maybe an inch here, an inch there, and you guys. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's down. the NFL, though. You know, you'd be close to close to making plays. The 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 the, 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 the room for error is really really small in this league. Uh, but yeah, that that doesn't deter us from um, our work. You know, we got to put in some work this this week um, going against a great offense. So that's just you know just sticking down to the execution, sticking down to the scheme, and just um, get ready to work. Take advantage of these days. You're face, facing a team in Dallas that hasn't run the ball real well, so they've kind of been very reliant on the passing game. Does that put the it's secondary even a little bit more on on notice this week. No, nah, no, nah, it's a veteran play call. Um, I'm sure that um, you know you count the two games they were behind. Um, you know you can't really just put that all on the fact that they don't want to run the ball. They definitely capable of running the ball. Really good balanced backfield um, and a lot of great playmakers if you include the wide receivers who run the ball as well. So yeah, it's just like I said, it's gonna take an all 11 effort. This is a great play caller. It's a great offense. Um, a lot of great players. Um, great quarterback. And yeah, we just got it's just gonna take all 11 to just go out there and execute. Happy to finally be back at home again now. And yeah, get definitely. Some of the <laughs> definitely, definitely. I feel like we've been traveling for for a little minute though uh, since we left Latrobe. But uh, yeah, it's it definitely gonna be good to get back in front of the home crowd. Uh, so that's something, I mean, you've only got one opportunity to do that yourself in the, in the regular season. Mm -hmm. Was that kind of like, okay, now I actually get to play some home games here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was definitely awesome, man. Definitely awesome um, venue that we get to play in. Uh, the, the, the fan base is unreal. Um, yeah, definitely uh, excited to get back in the front of home fans, um, primetime game. Yeah, it's, it's every, every guy in the NFL's dream to go out here on primetime and make plays um, in front of a great home base. So, yeah, looking forward to it. And, uh, Mike Tomlin usually doesn't lose in primetime games at home. Are you aware of his record in these games? Uh, nah, nah, I, really, I wasn't. pretty darn good. Yeah, I, I wasn't. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that's, that's awesome. That's, that's dope. Thanks, Dante. Thank you. And that was Steelers cornerback Dante Jackson uh, with me earlier today. Um, I caught up with uh, Dante in the locker room, and uh, good stuff from him, and mm -hmm. very confident guy. Uh, really likes it here in Pittsburgh. That's he's happy he's, to be here. And, yeah. As he said, really happy to be coming home for a game <laughs> after what he felt like, you know, the first month of the season was on the road. Yeah, and I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot of math to figure it out. They got a lot of road game or a lot of road games out of the way, and a lot of home games that settle in and put some put, put a new winning, winning streak together. You know? Absolutely, but uh, that's going to do it for today's show. So right. for my partner Matt Williamson, for Justin Miller here on site, keeping us on the air. For Tyler Vitmeyer, making sure our video looks good on your TV. <laughs> uh, I'm Dale Lolly. We thank you for listening to this edition of The Drive on the Steelers Audio Network. Steelers football happens here. The Pittsburgh Steelers Audio Network.